Hi guys, I'm Andy and welcome back to Backpacking UK. Hiking, backpacking and wild camping your thing. Please hit that subscribe button because that's what this channel's all about. Right, today we've come backpacking to the Lake District to wild camp at the wettest place in the UK. Now, judging by the weather right now, it won't let us down. It has been raining a lot. So we've started our backpacking at the Honister Pass Mine. We've literally had to come straight up the mountain, so we've stretched those leg muscles already, to our first summit of the day. We've got about eight to 10 of Wainwright's peaks in this uh, trail for the next couple of days. Cannot wait, we just need a little bit of luck from the weather. And this is what we've come up so far, literally, I mean directly straight up this mountain. And then it's got really, really rocky. The marks up there, right at the top. All the paths have turned to waterfalls today. So it could be interesting. So if you're interested to know where the wettest place in England is, you'll have to keep watching. So I'm not going to tell you straight away, I'm not going to leave it to the end either. It's an absolute savage start to get up to the top of Grey Knots, 697 metres high. Real windy up here, 15 kilos on my back, only weigh 70 kilos. This is this is this is tough, it's gonna be really hard today. Oh, I'm gonna feel Mark just in case <laughs> the fence falls down. You've got to put it back up. <laughs> so over here you've got Button here, Kennedale. Come around here. We've got Great Gable and Kirk Fell. So now we're off to Blandreth before taking on Great Gable. Must admit, with this payload, I am dreading it, I'm not going to lie. Uh, extreme conditions today. I've got full wet weather gear on, so I've got a proper sweat on, but I've also got a trump card, and that's what I'm sleeping in tonight. It doesn't make many appearances, but compared to conditions right today, you need a top end tent. That's exactly what this is. Mark's been the crash test dummy. See if he can get through this little tarn. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'll be going first. Tell you what, if you're looking for a wild camping spot in the Lake District, this is an absolute cracker, this is. So this is just between Grey Knots and Blandreth. On OS Map. So, OS Maps Augmented Reality View. This is part of the premium package, so. Mark, you can just scan round and it'll tell you all the peaks. Oh, I get absolutely battered by the wind now. So here we have haystacks up here and pillar up there. So summit number two of the day, Blandreff, 715 metres. So Mark's just, just decided, aka Extreme Mark, rather than just do Great Gable, we're going to go all the way over here, up to the peak of Kirkfell, back to Great Gable, and then on to the wettest wild camp in England. Got no idea why they call this. Windy gap. Where's the wind? Got a little break from the wind. It's washed water. We've got U Barrow up there. Ling Mount up there. And you have Scarfield Pike around there. And then you've got Great Cave up there. Oh, the weather's changed. Gusts. 50, 60, 70 mile an hour. We've canned off Kirkfell. <laughs> it's somewhere there. 
and we're trying to make our way up to Great Gable up there. Flipping heck, we're trying to get over uh, the Wasdale head side. So hard, so hard, so tired. Oh my gosh, this is, it came from nowhere. Um, at the end of the day, we made the right decision, changed our plans, and hopefully we'll get to our wild camp spot safe and sound. We've got pretty much zero visibility, but this is where you can't beat GPS watches. They're so good. Really got us out of trouble today. Well, we're not out of trouble, but hopefully they'll get us out of trouble. Fingers crossed. Got stuck at one point. Look at the wind. Oh my god. It's got to be 67 mile an hour. I couldn't stand up. I can move. I can move. I can move. It's so strong. Just got to carry on. Got to find some shelter. Made it to the top of the oh, We earned this summit. We earned this peak, that's for sure. think I'd see the day. Literally 20 seconds later, no visibility. That's one benefit of it raining. Absolutely stunning waterfalls. Look at that. So nice. That's what you come to the lakes for. Waterfalls, tarns and mountains. This is it. We made it to Sprinkling Tarn. Right, we're here. We made it to Sprinkling Tarn. God, what a savage journey though to get here. It was tougher than I ever thought. I mean, the forecast wasn't too bad today, but that's the lakes for you. Been hit by the lakes time and time again. Certainly not the first time, won't be the last time. Right, I've got a special tent that comes out just for weather like this, when it's wet and windy. Let's have a look. All right, let's unpack solo. Best thing about this tent is you can fix the ground sheet, the inner and the outer and part of the roof all together. So it goes up really fast. Those up. Let's take a look. So this is a little bird side, they're all waking up. I've got the ground sheet which fits in properly and you can just leave it on so you can pitch it with the ground sheet on a day like today, that's great. Then this is your little vestibule area and then this is the main space let's have a quick look around it's a really nice shape there's a lot of designs gone into this that's for sure um, can withstand oh, all sorts of weather heavy snow heavy winds heavy rain a lot and on a day like today 
in the lakes. I just needed to bring a decent tent with me. So when you go out wild camping, you've got to make sure you do everything in order. It's really, really important, especially when the weather's bad. So number one, pitch your tent. Number two, grab a bit. And if you're from the east of England, you've got to have an Adnams, South World's finest. This ghost ship, nice citrus, pale ale. I've slogged four cans of this up Great Gable today in 70 mile an hour winds. Believe me, I deserve all four of these. Oh mate, it's so good, it's cold. Mark's got his nature hike Monga 2 set up. I've done a review on this. Brilliant tent, definitely not a four season tent, but as a three season tent, it's cracking. And finally, the cloud just started to ease off. It's probably about eight o'clock right now. That's Franklin Town, lovely place. And around here is our camp. Just about there get tea on before it gets dark. Night's on now. Right, it's my sleeping setup for tonight. Classic OEX four season sleeping bag. The mountain equipment, sleeping mat, which is insulated I must say. And they're cheap and cheerful, but it's bloody comfy. The Trekology Lift 2.0 pillow. Right, so I've got MSR trail shot, a couple of Platypus foldable water bottles. Just want to fill them up, get some water. One for my coffees in the morning. No, I need them, that's for sure. And the other thing is, I need the water for my jet boil to boil up my pasta. So, in a couple of minutes, I've got two 500 ml bottles of filtered water that I can cook with and drink with. So this is our camp. Best thing about our camp, we've got a kitchen. Have a look at this. How lucky is this? Man, we've got a perfect spot. Oh no, I mean the perfect spot. How many wild camping sites actually have a kitchen? Look at this. Not bad, eh? Nicely sheltered. So what I'm gonna do, I'm using my jet boil minimo, tried and tested, absolutely brilliant bit of kit. I've got Tesco's finest uh, beef, portobello, mushroom, and red wine ravioli, which I can't wait to tuck into. Best thing about this, only takes about three minutes to cook, so you won't use a lot of gas. And to top it off, it's cold wet, it's windy, Ooh, a nice bit of spicy sauce, Tesco's Arabiata, that's going to have a nice little chilli kick to it, looking forward to that, best of all, let's sink some of these. Right, let's get cooking. Oh mate, we're so lucky that it hasn't, it's not raining right now. <laughs> Bearing in mind what bit we've been through today. Right, jet boils boiling up nicely. The pasta on. Right, that's it, ravioli done. Let's get it drained, let's get the sauce in. Right, sauce going in. Oh, look at that. That's it, pasta's ready. Mark, what you got there, mate? So I have a beef and potato pot. <laughs> nice expedition food. 800 calories for a big boy. <laughs> After a great evening, it's unfortunate. Just come to bed. It's just started raining. The wind's just picked up. So. I've had the tent in the morning. <laughs> yeah, not ideal. But see you in the morning. 
Morning guys, made it through the night. Bit of wind, bit of rain, but the Hilleberg didn't let me down. And this is where I'm gonna make my coffee this morning on my own little island right in the middle of the sprinkling town. Stunning, it's so nice, so quiet. There's a few people at Stihead Town yesterday, but looking around here, there's no one here, it's just me and Mark and loads of sheep. So to make my coffee, I'm using General Minimo, my Cedar Summit Coat Cup, my Soto Helix Coffee Maker, which is basically a coffee trooper. Got some long life milk, also got my favourite Labaza coffee. All I need a coffee today. This is going to be about the first of three, I reckon, before I do anything. Tell you what, I've had a tough week at work this week. Come out here, feel better straight away. Anyone that's ever feeling like they've had a bit of a tough or stressful time and that, get yourself out here. Get yourself out here. Free time. How you doing, Mark? You all right? How you doing? Not bad, how are you? Wicked night sleep. <laughs> As expected. Number two, I'll be buzzing. I'll be running up those mountains. The thing is, stop, stop raining about five. Got to finally get to warm my hands. I feel for you that you, you can't do coffee. Apple versus coffee. Which wakes you up the best? Has it got to be a special type of apple to wake yeah. you up? Any apple? Yeah. Where did you read that apples wake you up better than caffeine? <laughs> that is on Facebook. <laughs> All the facts are on Facebook. I've always said, be suspicious of small four season sleeping bags. Be very suspicious. <laughs> Breakfast today is Tesco's Oat Granola Flapjacks. Can't be bothered to make anything today, to be honest. Too tired. So flapjacks it is. So where I pitched my tent, pitched it in a very sheltered space here in a little cove. I pitched the most sort of aerodynamic end facing the open part, which is the tarn. Believe it or not, it's actually just starting to snow. I can't believe it. This certainly wasn't forecast. God, it's gonna be another eventful day, I think today. So this is the map. This is where we started, which is Honister Pass Mine. We came down here, then we were going to do Kirk Fell, but the weather came in real bad. So we made a decision about here to go to over to Great Gable. And then we went straight over the top, down past Diehead Tarn to Sprinkling Tarn, where we are now. Um, because we're up nice and early, what we're going to do, we're going to come down to Great End, which is 910 metres, which is actually higher than Great Gable, 899 metres. Um, then we're going to come here past Allen Crags, past Looking Steeds to Glamara, and I think what we're going to do is the quicker route back down to Sea Toller, and then we've got to walk up Honister Pass back to the mine. As always, leave no trace. All right, off to Great End. The sun's come out to join us. That is it, sprinkling turn. Look at that, so still. It wasn't like this when we got here last night. Really still today. Thank 
fair summit of the day. Great end, 910 meters. You've absolutely flown up this. Here we are, just climbing Allen Crags, 784 meters. Got a bit chilly, which is actually really, really nice. Right, Allen Crag Summit, 784 meters. It's not bad. It's not even 10 o'clock. We've bagged a couple of peaks already. Let's keep going. Very rare sighting of the unicorn sheep <laughs> this is high house tarn look at that we're below the clouds for once actually got a view today this is lincoln tarns a cracking little wild camping spot this one really really nice That's where we were, sprinkling tarn. Just at the base of Great End, which is in the clouds today. This is summit of Looking Steeds, 775 meters. Right, we've reached the summit. Glaramara, or Glaramara, apologies. As you can see, yet again, another summit, another cloud comes over. Not one for sightseeing today. It's Mark just descending from Glaramara. That guy. Hey. <laughs> Oh, it feels like we've been descending forever. It's really tricky descent coming back into Sea Toller. But we're rewarded by some amazing views. Right, we're coming to the end of our backpacking trip. It's been fantastic. Really, really, really hard. And I mean really hard. Definitely had bit of a wobble on Great Gable but you know in fairness to me it was them 60 70 mile an hour gusts but I was pinned I couldn't could not move could not move but you know times like that you just can't panic you just got to take a moment relax gather your thoughts and then just think about how you're going to overcome it. And we did, and it did. So it works. But hopefully what this video has proven is you can do some serious backpacking in the Lake District with a fully weighted backpack. I'm guessing mine weighed about 15 kilos, I'd say. So, you know, you can do it. Of course, you've got to have a level of fitness. But, you know, there's a lot of people posting, like, world camping trips that are about a K away from their car. And, you know, yeah, fair enough. But, you know, I'd like to show you that there's another side. At the end of the day, this channel's called Backpacking UK. you got to do some backpacking, haven't you? So... If you're interested in what we've been up to um, I'll put all my Strava routes in the description if you want to know what sort of gear we've been using um, I'll put that in the description too uh, I've had some cracking gear Hilleberg once once again it's unstoppable it does weigh that a little bit more but challenging conditions 
you can't beat it. And to be fair to the Nature Hike Monger too, you know, that did Mark proud. It's a really good tent. Goes to show you don't have to have a hillebag to, you know, get you through the night. But yeah, check out my other videos. Got loads of gear reviews out there. Got about 90 videos at the moment. So please check them out. Um, but try and get out and hopefully see you on that mountain soon. Cheers.